What's up guys? Back with another educational video and this week we are talking about a new study looking at sucralose and hunger. But first, you know the drill. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for that algorithm. New study just came out looking at the effect of sucralose on hunger and hypothalamic blood flow. Now, pretty cool study, uh, and it's bound to generate a lot of discussion. So here's my take. There's been a lot of messaging out there that artificial sweeteners, sucralose included, may increase hunger because of various different mechanistic sort of pathways. Uh, for example, some people say, well, these stimulate insulin and that's going to make you hungry. That's been roundly debunked. Well, these have a sweet taste, but then there's no sweetness, and so it's going to drive your appetite. This study was looking at either giving sucrose, water, or sucralose in water, and looking at the effects on hunger in terms of subjective ratings of hunger and its effects on blood flow to the hypothalamus, which apparently there's an association between levels of hunger and hypothalamic blood flow. So what did they find? Well, they looked at normal weight and obese people and found similar results. So they found that sucralose increased hypothalamic blood flow and increased ratings of hunger compared to sucrose, but did not increase ratings of hunger compared to water. Now, the big headline flashy takeaway is going to be sucralose stimulates appetite. Let's dig a little bit deeper, shall we? Do we have... Is everyone ready? Is everyone ready? It's time for your favorite human randomized controlled trials where they give sucralose sweetened beverages and look at changes in body weight. Oh, wait, we do. I'm looking at two trials where they gave sucralose sweetened beverages compared with sucrose or sugar sweetened beverages and looked at their effects on body weight. And what did they find? They found that in both studies, body weight was significantly decreased in the group getting sucralose. And they also found a decrease in energy intake in the group getting sucralose. Why the disconnect? Well, keep in mind, the study we're discussing here today, the new study, is looking at very, very short-term subjective ratings of hunger and hypothalamic blood flow, which is interesting, but it's just a biochemical mechanism. These studies I'm citing are 12-week randomized control trials looking at actual hard outcomes. So sucralose, in fact, did not increase appetite. In fact, it looks like it decreases appetite overall. Why? If it increased appetite, we would, one, expect to see increased energy intake in these studies, which we didn't. We actually saw a decrease in energy intake. And two, we'd expect to see an increase in body weight, which we don't see. We actually saw a decrease in body weight. So if sucralose did, in fact, make you more hungry somehow and increase energy intake, then it is a great fat burner because how else are these people losing body weight while eating more? You're looking at the differences between a mechanistic short-term study versus long-term outcome studies. And really, shouldn't we care about the outcomes regardless of mechanisms? Because a mechanism can exist, but it doesn't exist in isolation. There are hundreds and thousands of biochemical mechanisms that are active at the same time. And so perhaps this is one mechanism, the hypothalamic blood flow, where there is a negative effect on hunger. But there are obviously other mechanisms that have a positive impact on hunger because at the end of the day, people who take in sucralose compared to sucrose decrease their energy intake and lose body weight in human randomized control trials. There's also another thing to keep in mind. The group getting sucrose is getting actual calories. So it is not shocking to me that even though sucrose is not that satiating, that a group that's getting actual calorie intake is having decreased hunger compared to a group getting no calorie intake. In fact, they mentioned in the paper that sucrose decreases hypothalamic blood flow, whereas sucrose increased hypothalamic blood flow. So again, relative to nothing, having some calories apparently reduces appetite. And then that also explains why we did not see an increase in hunger ratings in the group getting sucralose compared to water. 
The other thing that's important to point out is that it's kind of impossible to blind a study like this. And what I mean by that is if you give somebody water versus sucralose in water, they are going to know what they are getting. They're going to know they're getting a sweet flavor versus nothing. Okay. Now that's not a huge criticism of the study. It's just a limitation. It is what it is, but it does play into the fact that it's, it's, you can't really blind this kind of study. Now you can match the sucrose and the sucralose group for sweet taste. And so that's kind of blinded, but you can't blind either of those groups compared to water. My takeaway here is this is interesting data. It's obviously worth exploring more, but right now the human randomized control trials do not support the idea that sucralose is going to increase appetite, energy intake, or body weight. In fact, they show the opposite. And if we look at some of the studies looking at sugar-sweetened beverages versus water versus non-nutritive sweetened beverages, so just kind of the whole class of sucralose, aspartame, these sorts of uh, no-calorie sweeteners, we actually see that people obviously lose more weight with the non-nutritive sweetened beverages compared to the sugar-sweetened beverages, but on average, they actually lose a little bit more than the group told to drink water. I'm not saying these no-calorie sweeteners are fat burners, but it is quite obvious that substituting these in place of sugar-sweetened beverages, and apparently water in some cases, actually has a better effect on satiety. Now, why might this be? Well, I think what it really suggests is that People told to drink water who are used to drinking sugar-sweetened beverages are probably trying to seek out that sweet taste somewhere else in their diet. Whereas if they're taking in a non-nutritive sweetened beverage in place of sugar-sweetened beverages, perhaps that fills that sugary void and they don't seek it out as much in the rest of their diet. If you're somebody who just likes drinking water and you don't have a big sweet tooth and you don't feel so inclined to consume sweet things in your diet, then you don't need to add in non-nutritive sweetened beverages. You can just continue to consume water. But if you're somebody who is trying to lose weight and you have a history of drinking sugar-sweetened beverages, drinking non-nutritive sweetened beverages, i.e. diet soda, appears to have a pretty substantial effect on weight loss with results of up to six and a half kilos of weight loss when replacing sugar-sweetened beverages with non-nutritive sweetened beverages. Not saying you should take in sucralose. I'm not saying that it's a health-promoting food. I am simply saying that compared to sugar-sweetened beverages, there's a lot of advantages here. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. And if you like these research breakdowns, make sure you subscribe to my research review, Reps. Every month, we break down five studies that are popular in fitness, nutrition, and health, and we present them in a way that is palatable and easy for anyone to understand, even if you don't have a scientific background. So we really take the guesswork out of these studies. We give you the straight truth without the BS. And when you subscribe, you don't just get access to our current issue, but also all of our archived issues, which are, I think we're on like issue 34 or 35 by the time this video is filmed. So it's a great value very low cost, and it's an excellent product. I highly recommend it if you want to take your brain and body gains to the next level. Catch you guys next week.